Hello viewer and welcome to Spotlight here on Hope TV where you look and live. And here on Spotlight we are always doing our very best to bring to you persons who are doing amazing things to transform our community in the direction of light. Now I'm sure you've thought about or come across a stay home mom. Now I don't know what comes to your mind when you stay home mom, but this edition of Spotlight is going to be all about the stay home mom. And we are so delighted to have with us Anne Mwaora, who is the founder of Rise Platform. Is there specifically to support and empower stay home moms. And it's a conversation that everyone needs to hear. The working mom, the working dad, the stay-at-home dad, the children, it's for all of us. And it's a very, very conversation. So welcome to Spotlight. And Anne, welcome to Spotlight. Thank you for having me. It's an amazing <laughs> thing, you know, just the way God can put in your heart, you know, this category of people who are very unique in our population and who also the church is... Um, uh, they are really part of the church as well. But sometimes we don't hear, we don't hear a lot about stay-at-home moms in church or support groups about stay-at-home moms. Sometimes we don't, we don't even think they need support, right? <laughs> so, I mean, just highlighting this uh, important um, category of people in our community, it's an amazing thing, you know? Absolutely. So can you maybe tell us about um, you as, because you have been at some point, I think even at, to this point, uh, a stay-home mom of, in different ways. I mean, what led you to, to that um, staying home situation? Um, so for me, actually, what led me was it found me. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Being a stay-at-home mom was thrown at me. It's not a decision that we made with um, my husband, mm -hmm. but we found ourselves in this situation because I was in between jobs trying to figure out what to do. I had just lost a job, which I had done for about nine months. And previously, before that, I had another job that I had worked in for about six years. Mm -hmm. So here I was nine months into what I, I would say was a really good job. Um, and they closed shop. And I was out there trying to figure out, okay, who do I send my CV to? Do I start uh, a business? What do I do? Mm -hmm. And as we were trying to figure out, we realized we were pregnant. And here we are. Uh, this is an, um, I had never thought, it had never crossed my mind mm -hmm. that I could even be a stay at home mom. And so, of course, I continued looking for a job. Uh, six months came, and of course, my tummy was bulging. And in my head, I thought, who will give me a job when I'm this pregnant? Uh, my husband was very supportive and he said, you know what, let's shelf the idea of you looking for a job until you're able to bring up the baby at least six months, exclusive breastfeeding, and then we can start looking for mm -hmm. another job. And I made peace with that. So I was there six months. By the time our baby number one was five and a half months, we realized that again we were pregnant with our second baby. Now. I don't know how, but I believe it was God's grace, mm -hmm. God's protection that I never went into postpartum depression because I didn't think I would be having these two little babies and no job because for me, the corporate world was still calling. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, we had the conversation uh, with my husband and agreed, you know what? Again, exclusive breastfeeding for six months and then we will be back to work. I can tell you, Six months turned into one year, mm -hmm. into two years, into seven years. Seven years. Yes. And it wasn't easy initially, but with, as the days and the months unfolded, it became much easier. Mm -hmm. And with his support, I must confess, I had such strong support okay. from him. Great, great. Yes, so it made it easier. Now, um, you were supposed to be in a temporal state when it comes to staying at home because you really felt that you needed to go working. But as time went on, it became seven years, mm -hmm. right? Maybe you can take us through 
the transition, the mental transition. Uh, at what point did you move from that point of looking for a job to I'm now settling, you know, to take this assignment seriously of just uh, of being at home in a mom? The mental transition. I, I must say I found solace with God. Mm -hmm. I, I believe I have a good relationship with God, uh, a vibrant one. And so most times I would cry out to God and tell him, you know what, God, show me. If I am supposed to be here now in this season, then give me the peace. Give me the peace. Give me the joy that mm -hmm. I need to be in this season. Then the other thing that I found very helpful was support, of course, from my husband. Mm -hmm. And he was there to provide. I will not for every need, but for everything that we wanted. No, for everything that we needed, he provided. Mm -hmm. I wanted many things. <laughs> Finances may not have been there for everything I wanted, but he sure did give what was needed mm -hmm. at the time. So that support system was very important for me to just settle down and say, you know what, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And then God gave me peace to walk the journey. And I found fulfillment in it. Um, the other thing that I believe also helped me to navigate that season was also in my free time, I, I tried to find myself. And that meant um, I, I would spend time reading a bit of books in areas that I felt I needed to improve on. I felt I, I had to find time to also do a bit of business when the children uh, didn't need me. They, they may have been asleep. Mm -hmm. I found time to even go back to school in that season and better myself. So I think all that put together in my seven years made it much easier mm -hmm. for me. Now, yeah. yeah, we'll come back to your gains at some point. Yeah. Because I'm sure there, there, there are seven years uh, there was of course, lots of gains uh, that you made that you just mentioned here. We'll come back to them at some point. Yeah. But let's, let's stay with the transition, the mental yeah. psychological transition. When you realize that this ain't going away, <laughs> this staying at home ain't going away. Yeah. Are there some things you moaned, some things you longed for, some things you missed coming from the corporate life and now seeing, hey, I don't see, I don't have that experience now, or I don't know when these things will return. Are there some things that you can remember you moaned? I moaned some friendships. Mm -hmm. So um, human beings are social beings. So the social element of it, I lost a bit of it. And, and, and I believe I lost it because we no longer had our professional conversation so to speak. Mm -hmm. Most of my conversations were of, oh, you know, I need to do baby clinic. I need to make lunch. I need to make dinner for the children. I need to, you know, even plate my daughter's hair. And, and for me, those were real conversations because that was the season I was in. Mm -hmm. For them, it was, oh, you know, I need to diarize this meeting. I need mm -hmm. to meet so and so. I need to do these presentations. So our conversations became different. And so we sort of disengaged. Mm -hmm. I missed those because it was a life that I had gotten used to. Then emotionally, of course, I had my moments when I thought the children should be behaving this way and they're behaving this way. At times, I thought they're contributing to my not being where I thought I needed or I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And so maybe I would project that on the children, which was not fair. There were moments when even the support that my husband was giving me was no longer really appreciated as I would have wanted to. I will tell you, he's the kind of person who will, who will support you even when you don't want to. He would come with the newspapers. <laughs> Those days, I remember we used to have business daily. I think it was on Tuesdays. And he would bring that newspaper and there's a nation and standard. And he'd be like, here, yeah, I think is, just engage. <laughs> it's just bringing the outside world to you. No. You know? <laughs> it's how the world is. His, yeah. his motive was mm -hmm. so right. But mm -hmm. I would look at him and think, really? Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't think like... <laughs> yeah. But... Um, those were moments that I had that, that really, uh, I knew that, you know what, Anne, if you don't start realizing that um, there are people here who really want to support you and uh, you start looking at things negatively, you, you will have a downward spiral mm -hmm. and you don't want that. Um, of course, I also started engaging other stay-at-home moms mm -hmm. who were my friends, others. I forced myself to be their friends because we... 
we could relate. We had common conversations. And so at times we would have pity parties, you know. Uh, she comes over with her children and they have sort of play dates and we would mourn our seasons. At that times we would laugh at them. And so um, that kind of transition, mm -hmm. I, I would say I had to choose my moments and I had to be intentional about what friendships I wanted, the mm -hmm. positive ones I wanted to keep. And I had to tell myself, you know what, Anne, keep off the negative mm -hmm. stuff okay. because it can actually have uh, a negative impact on you All right. if you don't watch out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, now you mentioned die rising, you know, your corporate <laughs> friends talk about die rising and everything. Now here you have a day, right? Uh, and you're staying at home as a mom. Can you just tell us how you diarized your day? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not really possible to diarize your day because uh, I know you're, you're thinking, okay, is that a typical day for a stay-at-home mom? Honestly, no. Mm -hmm. Because as a, as a stay-at-home mom, you're the chef, you're the housekeeper, you're the playmate, you're the teacher, you're all these things in one day. I don't know how you put that down. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I must say, it gets easy when you're able to sort of um, organize your day, okay? So say you, you decide to wake up earlier than usual, for example, you wake up an hour before the children wake up so that you can have, it could be your me time, you want to read a book, you want to spend time with God, you want to maybe run to the grocery store to pick a few things, you're able to do a few things before the children wake up. Now, when they wake up, what do we need to do? So you have, is it one hour that you need to do breakfast with them, then another hour to do the dishes, then another hour to do the laundry, screen time, how much time do they need mm -hmm. on the screen? Because So if you're able to break that down during the day, it declutters your mind and you're able to be more at ease mm -hmm. with the children. Okay. Yes. All right. It's, it's interesting that, I mean, we cannot talk diarizing. Every day is really unique. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. Uh, all over the place. And uh, I, th I think in the midst of the babies, in the midst of the children, because children seem to be a big part of the stay-at-home stay mom, uh, how would you generate um, your me time in the midst of all that? So the me time happens mm. when they, they sleep. Mm. So when they sleep or when they're doing their screen time. So when they sleep, you're able to maybe uh, just get out and especially for most of the people now in the urban setup, you have a house help most times uh, for those who are able to. So you're able to tell uh, your house help, just watch the children. I will be away for the next two hours and I will be back. Mm -hmm. Now, not everyone, because we are talking about one income, is able to have that luxury of having um, a house help. So the me time for that person is a bit different. You will not run out to go to the salon and go do your hair or meet a friend. So your me time could be just when the children are in bed, then you're reading a book. Or maybe you're watching a movie. It could be your me time. That's mm -hmm. how you just unwind. Um, the other me time could actually be watching something that you love with the children, a cartoon you love with the children. And I have found that actually very... Uh, it's also a session of bonding with mm -hmm. the children. You sit down and you're watching a cartoon that they love and you also love. Mm -hmm. and, and you can also learn a few lessons. You can teach them through the cartoon a few lessons. So for me, those were the joys. Those were the joys with the children. Okay. Yeah, That we get to share something together and talk through it. Oh, do you remember what happened with that, with that character? Do you remember this? So mm -hmm. those are the joys okay. also. Yeah. Um, it's, it's good to know that you still get an intentional me time during that uh, staying at staying at homes, you no know, experience. Um, I was listening to uh, some conversation that was debating the name or the description "stay at home mom," and the the, the conversation was going like, "Look, the most important um, name in this description is the mom, but mom is put right at the end. Stay at home mom, right? And uh, the question is, stay at home mom. I mean." Is that a good description? Because why would you want to isolate the mom and call the mom stay at home mom as if the mom should not stay at home, home should be elsewhere? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I think it has evolved over the years. Mm -hmm. When we were growing up, it was housewife. And I mean, housewife denoted everything home. And of course, the core was the children. 
So I think it has evolved with time and now uh, it's stay at home mom. But going back to your question, uh, it almost looks like uh, it's an instruction, stay at home mom, mm. you, you better stay at home. And, and, and I think it's a misconception um, if, if you ask me, which then makes us think that it's not a good thing to be at home with the mom. Mm -hmm. I believe if the children were asked, uh, what would you prefer? Would you prefer your mom being at work or would you prefer your mom being home taking care of you? I believe the child would say, of course I want mom at home to just take care of us. I want to be home with mom. I want mom to be the one to take me to school and to pick me and, and all those things. Of course, those, those could be ideal situations and it doesn't happen. Uh, but I think society should demystify. Mm -hmm. What is this whole thing about being a stay-at-home mom and not and, and being sort of stigmatized? Mm -hmm. There's stigma mm -hmm. around it. And that's why maybe most people and most organizations, most churches may not even have those support groups because it's stigma and uh, we don't want really to shout about it. Uh, let me give you an example. So in my, in, in my season of being a stay-at-home mom, we would go to meetings where it could be you know, official for my husband and you're interacting with the people and trying to network. And of course, everyone flips their cards. Uh, uh, and you don't have a card. And so they ask you, so what do you do? And you, you act I would actually hesitate to say what I do. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the stigma. But when, when I would get the courage and say, I'm a stay-at-home mom, they'd be like, oh, okay. And the conversation would end right there. And for me, my greatest desire is let's normalize being a stay-at-home mom and let's look at it as work. It is work that we are doing for our children for the betterment of this society and the nation at large because... When you look around, I don't think we are, the people that we are dedicating our children to, I, I don't believe they are the best, they're the best to instill the right values in our children. A parent is the best positioned person to instill the right values in the children. Okay. So if you're able to do that, I think it's the best thing that can happen mm -hmm. to a family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I'm still at the social event where oh. you are you're with your husband and people are introducing themselves and you feel a little withdrawn in terms of whom do I say I am so meaning that there is a certain crisis within you in identity terms of crisis there's a crisis within you because you're not bold or proud uh, of just declaring who you are yeah. uh, maybe you can uh, ex tell us more about that identity crisis that is connected with the cultural stigma about stay-at-home moms? I think the way we are cultured, your identity comes from what you do, and what you do does not include being a stay-at-home mom. What you do in the corporate world, in the business world, what you do at the community level, community service, and it has to be huge. Uh, and, and, and so for me, it, it disheartens me that Society doesn't want to identify the stay-at-home mom as one who contributes anything to the society mm -hmm. or anything to the home. And, and, and I think we need to come out of that and celebrate the stay-at-home mom. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that, especially when we talk about Arise, your initiative, that platform of supporting stay-at-home moms. Uh, and the identity issue and our society, our culture, because some tags are put on stay-at-home moms, like wasting themselves, you know, maybe they have many degrees, uh, you, I mean, you, huge qualifications, but then they stay at home, like people say, oh, why are you wasting yourself at home? Uh, tags like they are lazy, you know, that they can't get themselves to anything serious, you know. Uh, then a tag like um, they're too rich, you know, I mean, they are very wealthy and therefore they don't need to work. You know, those kinds of tags. And I want you to speak to those tags because we encounter them uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. 
it's unfortunate that we do. And um, I think beyond the society and, and even our family members giving us those tags, I think also for the stay-at-home mom, we also allow these people to define who we are. And, and, and like you said, and, and yeah, we will go further into that. I think it's time we arise mm -hmm. and, and speak up and speak up and uh, let people see what exactly we do. Mm -hmm. and, and I know even um, at, at the family level, a spouse would come home and will ask, uh, so what have you been doing uh, the whole day? What have you been doing the whole day? Mm -hmm. Because either it's genuine, they really don't understand what you have been doing, or they're just wondering, okay, the house still looks untidy. You actually don't look like you have showered. What have you been doing the mm -hmm. whole day? But you have had so much to do that you have not even had that time to take a shower. And that is devalued. Mm -hmm. There was a study that was done by um, an organization called um, salary.com. Mm -hmm. So they investigate the different uh, jobs and the different uh, job groups and how those jobs are paid. And actually they realized that uh, the job of being a stay-at-home mom, you're supposed to earn about 119,000 USDs. So that's about 11.9, mm -hmm. well, maybe 12 million Kenya shillings per year. That's how much a stay-at-home mom should mm -hmm. be paid. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people earn such, <laughs> such money. <laughs> I mean, that's how mm -hmm. much a stay-at-home mom is worth in terms of Those finance. Those are CEOs of huge corporates. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but here we are, our society has totally devalued who the stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. is. You know, I, when you want to talk about devaluing, yeah. uh, let's flip this to the side of the children. And you've seen your children grow, you know, from toddlers to, you know, people who can really express themselves and are mature now, older. Have they ever critiqued your staying at home? Have they ever asked, for instance, Mom, why are you always at home? Why aren't you like other mothers? Let's just hear from your experience, the children. One of the things that I have realized that they love is mm -hmm. the time that we spend together. Either dropping them to school, the conversations we have around that. Mm -hmm. And it could be just you're looking out of the window and maybe there's someone who is asking for a ride and you, there's a lesson there to be learned. Mm -hmm. You know what? In the society that we are living in, you don't go asking for a lift. Or if you see someone mm -hmm. and they're really desperate, at times you can't stop. And there's a whole teaching around mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. If uh, the sun hasn't come out and it is 10 o'clock, what are we experiencing? Are we in winter? Are we? Mm -hmm. There's so many lessons that you learn. Then in the evenings, how you, you are able to talk about their days. How was your day? Mm -hmm. Who is your best friend? Who did you have a meal with? Because that's where the conversations build. Mm -hmm. And I must say, when, when you're not able as a mom or as a parent to do that for your child, you miss out on quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Now, at there times they have looked at me and said, oh, mom, you know, we mm. have loved how you have just sacrificed. I remember I was telling them how I wanted a nice car. <laughs> and I told them, you know what? But we couldn't get the car for mom because at that time, mom was not working and we had one income. And I walked them through that journey of even how we had to budget until mom is able to get even a car. And they really appreciate it. And they saw the sacrifice and they said, you know what, mom, thank you. Thank you for sacrificing that time to be with us. Mm -hmm. And you sacrifice not having what you wanted. And those are the things that we teach our children. You know, you, you have to sacrifice this for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And those are the lessons you also teach with your life. Okay. So there have been those moments. You yes. know, because somebody said that uh, don't just put the lens on the stay-at-home mom. Children. If you want to know the value of a stay-at-home mom, ask the child, you know. And it's a whole different story when you talk to the children. And I think building the value of staying at home yeah. can also be viewed and generated a lot from uh, speaking to the children whose mothers have stayed at home for a significant period of time, like seven years, you know. And the other thing, yeah. actually, children have a way of teaching you. Mm -hmm. They teach you lessons that you will never pick from, from a classroom or from anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I mean, lessons like even patience, lessons like how you communicate, 
lessons like being creative, mm -hmm. you learn some of those skills at the home setup. You're taught too You're by, taught the children. by the children. And of course, the, 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 the scriptures do tell us that the kingdom of God is for they who are like the children. Son. So you're closer to the kingdom lessons when you hang out with your children. Yeah. Now, um, there are different ways in which, for you, it, you were not voluntarily um, a mom who stays at home. That is a circumstance where sometimes you find yourself thrust into being a stay-at-home mom. But there are other circumstances that lead uh, you know, a mother to choose or to find themselves staying at home. Can you just tell us maybe other scenarios that lead to the stay-at-home experience? Um, of course, there are, there are moms who, because this is how I grew up, then mm -hmm. I don't want to give this to my children. Let me give an example of my life. Um, and I don't think I've shared this story anywhere. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was brought up by a single mom. And so she had to work to take care of me. So she left me with my grandmother for about, until I was in class seven. Mm -hmm. So I stayed with my grandmother. Now for me, now looking back in hindsight, one of the things that I really missed was calling her mom. Because for those years, I couldn't call her mom. I was living with my cousins and my grandmother. And so my cousins would call my mother Tata, that meaning mm -hmm. auntie. Mm -hmm. So for me, I called my mother Tata auntie for the longest time. And I look back and that for me now was I can't believe that happened to my life because my mom was not present because she didn't have an option. Being a single mother at times calls for you to just go out, sacrifice not being with your children. And I wish things were different. Mm -hmm. So having looked at that, I knew for sure there was something I wanted different for my children. I wanted to be present. I, I didn't know how that present would look like and God just threw it at me. So for me, that was one of the factors that I really enjoyed than just being with my children. Mm -hmm. The other reason why some parents make those decisions is if you have a special need child, and of course, no one else can take care of your child as much as you can. And there are circumstances where you really have to go work to, to get that support, financial support, to be able to take care of them better because they need more medical care. Mm -hmm. So that, again, would make you stay at home with your children. Um, maybe there are skills that you have identified in your children. There's some interests that require you to be there more than another child. For example, there are skills where your child is, um, let's say, even a footballer. So they will need to attend lessons for football every day, maybe odd hours. It could be from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock. You need to be there with your child. Make sure you pick them, drop them. It could be a different place. The other one is we have homeschooling now. Uh, and of course, with the pandemic that has hit us, most moms have found themselves at home, uh, no income or with one income. And so you have opted to homeschool your child. So that has been thrusted on you. Mm -hmm. And some parents are doing very well in it. Others are still struggling, but they're making effort to be better. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and thank you for this amazing insights. We'll come back and talk specifically about the Arise platform and what's happening there. Uh, viewer, we are talking about the stay-at-home moms. Amazing insights and the need for us to remove the stigma and begin to embrace these mothers as equal contributors in the society. And we are taking a short break. Uh, don't go anywhere. Uh, more insights coming and this is Spotlight. See you on the other side of the break. Welcome back. This is Spotlight and we are talking to Anne Maura who is the founder of the Arise platform that supports stay-at-home moms. Amazing insights. And uh, uh, Anne, maybe you can tell us about the Arise platform, uh, the support group for stay-at-home moms and what it is about and how you, um, how you go about supporting their stay-at-home moms via this platform? 
Um, so it actually started as just a, a social support system. Mm -hmm. In 2018, I remember it was 18th of August on my birthday. Mm -hmm. I just thought, uh, Lord, this is an experience I have, I have come out of, so to speak. And having talked to many other stay-at-home moms in that journey, I felt that most of them needed help. Most of them needed hand-holding to just arise and be better, mm -hmm. not to stay there, uh, pity patting and wondering, is this it? Is this all? Uh, and, and to remind them how important this is. So 18th of August, 2018, I had the first group, support group, and we were 12 ladies that just came together, sat and fellowshiped and made merry and cried as we shared our stories. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, most of it was more of tears and just because I realized most of the stay-at-home moms feel alone, feel not seen. You feel like no one appreciates you. And so as they shared their story and their journeys, then it was more of tears. But after that, of course, it was prayer and encouragement and empowerment and just say, have you read this book? I think I should give you this book. I think you should read this book. And out of that then was born this beautiful initiative mm -hmm. of uh, how then can we ensure that we meet more often and how can we continue supporting one another? And uh, out of that, I must say also there's, there's a book mm -hmm. that I was able to write, just sharing my experience of how that was. Mm -hmm. And I believe that my story can be a source of encouragement to another stay-at-home mom um, who would want to be strengthened and to be encouraged to walk this journey and wear that badge of being a stay-at-home mom with such honor and dignity. Mm -hmm. And reminding her that, you know what, it's a beautiful journey. At the time when you're going through it, it may not feel that way, but looking back, you would never trade that season for anything. So um, after that, we planned, can we meet again in another two months? And so we started meeting every quarter and uh, sharing our stories, exchanging ideas on how you spend your me time, just generally talking about the experiences of the stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. So after that, we did the book and it was received very well. Grateful to God for the grace to even go through just sharing my journey. It's not easy to just put your life mm -hmm. out there. So that was a real journey. And I had a lot of support from um, the stay-at-home moms mm -hmm. and, and of course uh, the family set up. Now, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, uh, we have the initiative where we have developed programs and resources where the stay-at-home moms can access them via our website. Mm. You so can tell us about the website so that you can, okay. the people who are watching can be able to actually follow. Yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. the website is www.arisam, sam is S-A-H-M dot com. Mm -hmm. So you got- Sam for stay at home Yes, stay moms. at home moms. Okay. So S-A-H-M dot com. So you can go to the website, you can access especially the book. Yeah, so you can read the book and then we have now programs that we have developed specifically for the stay-at-home mom. One of it is Arise, stay-at-home mom, you're a masterpiece mm -hmm. to remind you who you are. And I know a masterpiece is just an outstanding work of artistry and that is what we are. That is who God has created us to be. And I, I believe there's a verse, Ephesians 2.10, that talks about... Um, you're a masterpiece in God's hands. Christ, I mean, created after Christ Jesus to do the works of God. Uh, I have just paraphrased it. So God calls us masterpieces. So a stay at home mom is a masterpiece of God because you are equipped with skills that many may not be equipped with to just, you know, bring up the children at home. So that program is six weeks program where we take you through different pillars that help you along this journey. So pillar number one is spiritual. Where do you draw your strength from, your values and your principles as you navigate the journey? The other one is your emotional pillar. How do you manage your emotions in this journey? The other one is physical. Now, one of the things that moms struggle with is our physical well-being mm -hmm. because um, after the birth of your children, everything changes. Myself, I struggled with acne for so long. You, I would look myself in the mirror, I, I don't like what I see. So what did I do about it? I had to seek medical attention because it was to that extreme. To date, I'm still struggling with that, but I have made baby steps. The other one is weight issues. 
that uh, we struggle with. And at the time, when, you, when you're a stay-at-home mom, you may not have the luxury to go to the gym because the finances cannot allow you to do that. So get a gym in your home. I did for myself, I, I bought a skipping rope and I started skipping every day. It was starting from 50 and today I can do a thousand. I mean, very easily within, you know, no short time. It's the spirit so, of arising. Right? <laughs> it's the spirit of arising. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be creative in your own small way to be better. So apart from physical, we have intellectual. Today, most of the moms have been to school. They have their first degree, their second degree. Some of them have a third degree. So really, they are intellectuals. So how do you keep yourself engaged at that level? How do you ensure that you still have those conversations with your professional friends that walked away or are still in your life? Mm -hmm. So better yourself. Just because you're a stay-at-home mom doesn't mean you cannot engage in an intellectual conversation. So grow yourself in that area. The other one is our social well-being. Mm -hmm. We have to be intentional about ensuring that we are surrounded by social wellness. It could be our friends, it could be our family members, our extended family, just to ensure that we have that circle of friends and family that also anchor us because when everything is beating you up you can run to your family mm -hmm. so we call it spies the s the p the i the e and the s okay. so those are pillars that we we embrace in our arise um program that we ensure that it is instilled yeah then we have another program called reinvent her this is a one-on-one -on -one coaching that uh once you are able to go through the arise program then how do we reinvent you now, on reinvent, I know at some point all stay at home moms want to transition. So, what are you transitioning to? Are you transitioning to work, the corporate world? Are you transitioning to business? What are you transitioning to? Mm -hmm. So, we need to be clear on what that looks like, and then we are able to help you navigate and get back there. Okay. I will share my story. Mm -hmm. um, so, when I went, I finally got back to work and now I am doing consultancy work so I'm still able to work really like 50% at home. Um, it was not very easy to get back. I mean so much had changed in seven years <laughs> from the social media to how presentations are done. I mean it was a totally new world out there. So one of the things that I was privileged to do was to go back to school to do my second degree. And of course, it opened me up to what to expect in the, in the work environment. But I must say also, there was a lot of grace with my bosses then. They were very gracious and allowed me to just learn. And so um, reinvent her walks you through that journey okay. and helps you also develop your CV. Can we just dust it and just put it together in a way that is presentable? Mm -hmm. And even about the CVs. So how do I explain the gap in my CV of the seven no, years? Let's, let's stay with that because <laughs> um, the, just that description, the gap, yeah. is itself in a way stigmatizing mm -hmm. because with all you've talked about, or with all the things you've learned in terms of being with your children, uh, with all the mental um, strength you've had to gain to marshal to be in that space of raising kids, um, the whole moment itself and the language of gap, is that really a gap and Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. But that's how the corporate world, so to speak, views it. And, and I wish we would change that because the period spent with the children, you're able to gain skills that are so critical in the work environment. Skills like communication, skills like team building, skills like empathy, skills like follow through. Mm -hmm. And especially this generation, oh, we need follow through. I mean, you start a task and you're not able to finish. But as a stay-at-home, you cannot afford not to finish a task, especially where the children are concerned. Mm -hmm. So those are the skills that you really acquire during that season that should be appreciated in a work setup. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. uh, when you're staying with that, and I think you're raising a very important point, and all the employers um, and all the managers and bosses who are often sitting on interview panels should hear this, that they're coming in of a stay-at-home mom 
and they see that, oh, this person has been a stay at home mom for seven, 10 years, that they should not see a person who, is, who has not been doing nothing. You know, they should actually see somebody who is totally interesting and they should even give more attention to that person because that 10 years raising children is not a gap. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And some of these soft skills actually can never be acquired in a classroom. You will never be taught how to, how to persevere, mm -hmm. you know, how to be patient, how to empower people. I mean, you, you learn it through, I learned it with my children. You know, and also you're, you're <laughs> growing a person in a literal way. Like you can actually see the little person grow, yeah, you know? Yeah. And uh, uh, I think that those, those are very practical spaces, you know, they reinvent and they arise. And at the end of this uh, program, I'm sure you'll tell us how one can connect with that. Very practical spaces. And uh, I want to just also ask, because it seems like the stay-at-home moment is really children-focused in a big way. Um, is it possible that even after having spent all that time with the children, you look at them and they still did not turn out right? Is it possible? Yes, mm -hmm. it is possible. But you know what the Bible says about that? Train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old enough, they will not depart from it. Your work mm -hmm. is to train. And you see, like now, what would happen is, what was the point? <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, like, wow, she spent all this time with her children. And the talk in the neighborhood is like, look how it's turned out. You know, it, is there a real advantage of, of doing, of staying with the children if there are no real guarantees that they will turn out in a good way? I strongly believe mm -hmm. that at some point, that child who may somehow go wayward, they will remember. They will remember that at some point, my mother spent time telling me, this is right, this is wrong. This is the way, do not turn away from it. Mm -hmm. I believe that at the back of their minds, they will remember and they will come back because God is just. God is just and our sacrifices will not go to waste. Mm -hmm. There's no wasted time. Mm -hmm. There's no wasted time spent with the children. I strongly believe that. Okay. Yes. I mean, you're speaking very, with a lot of conviction. Yes. So it is totally worth it. Absolutely. Now, um, the home scenario. Yeah. You're a stay-at-home mom. By God's grace, you have a husband. Are there some unique family conflicts that happen because of the stay-at-home situation? Yes, mm -hmm. we have come across those. And, and one of the conflicts is about, is, is the mom sort of feeling like not seen mm -hmm. and not appreciated, uh, feeling like undervalued by the spouse. Mm -hmm. And the spouse may not actually even be doing that intentionally, but that's the feeling that she gets. And so out of that, there are conflicts that come of, you really don't care, I need this, you're not supporting me enough, I've been here with a child, would you sacrifice your nights to be on duty as I sleep? And please remember the spouse needs to go to work the following day. Mm -hmm. But the demand from the mom is, uh, please, the night is your duty. The baby cries and you need to attend to them. So that, of course, will, there will be conflicts around it. Mm -hmm. So I, I would advise, before you get into the stay-at-home mom season, let it be a consultative process. Of course, there, there will be um, issues where you will agree and disagree on, but let's agree that, you know, we are doing this, is it for two years, is it for three years, is it for seven years? Let us be clear about how long. Of course, I think that is important. Yeah, and you're talking about consultation. Yes. But also we know that there are some husbands who actually force their wives to stay at home. How about that? That's a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're expecting that your wife will be forced to take care of your children and expect happy children and a happy wife in a conducive environment, even for yourself when you come home, it's not gonna happen. So that's why agreeing to do this thing together is very important. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that in, in the 70s and, and the 60s and maybe 80s partly, 
we had we watched our parents staying home and taking care of the and, and it wasn't um, an area of negotiation there's no negotiation it was just automatic you're staying home with the children and I will go and fed for the children or for the family but today the woman is much more empowered the woman has gone to school so they have a voice mm -hmm. so I think it's important to just agree we are doing this because we can do it because finances may allow us just uh, working with the one income allows us to just continue bringing up the children without a second income. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But when you force someone, I think that's not even fair. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, let's stay with dads a little bit because they are a big part of this stay-at-home mom equation. Um, in the course of your ministry serving the stay-at-home moms, have you encountered the stay-at-home dads? And what has been your response? Amazingly, there are dads who just love being home with their children. And given a choice, it's okay. Let the, let the mom go work and bring in the bacon and the bread. I am happy to just dust the house and take care of the children and change diapers. That looks a bit upside down though. But. It does. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It does, but, but I think it's conversations that we, sh that we should start having because it's happening. And now with the pandemic, a lot of dads have lost their jobs. Mm. So they have been actually forced to stay home with the children and moms are working. Mm -hmm. So how do you then embrace that situation and make peace with it? Mm -hmm. And I think that because they are those dads who are been thrust into that situation, maybe not out of choice. What, how would you speak to them coming from your experience of um, uh, this stay-home parenting? Just a word to the stay-at-home dads who find themselves in that position. Mm -hmm. um, a word of comfort, if you're not enjoying it, it's a season. <laughs> it's still a season. Mm -hmm. It will come to an end at some point where the children will not need you as much as they need you now. So it's a season. And you know what? You can still reinvent yourself. And you can still find yourself again, even after this season. It works for both the mom and the dad. And just try and make peace with it and find joy. Find a support system where you can also go and unwind. And maybe it's a platform that we should also create for the stay-at-home dad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes, find a support system that supports you through this season. That would be very important. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, it almost looks like upside down. <laughs> And the crisis is pretty different from the crisis yes, of, yes, of the it mother. Is. Yeah. And I don't know how the fellow men view that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, but I think it's conversation that we should start having. Yeah, and a space that needs to be created. Absolutely. And we've rightly talked about this pandemic season when yeah. many um, men have found themselves um, out of what they call called stable jobs. And so it's, a, it's an important um, space to be created uh, yes. when you think about it. And um, when it comes to the timing, the timing of transiting now from being at home to now going to what you can call more active work, you know, um, how do you, how would you assess that this is the time now for me to now look for a larger engagement in terms of work and livelihood? It's definitely not a one-day event. You don't just up and go. Of course, you, you talk about it for a month, two months, six months. So, and you prepare your spouse, you prepare yourself, you prepare the children because detaching is very difficult. Because even after you go back, maybe to the corporate world, for example, you will sit at your desk and you will be thinking, oh my goodness, what's happening to my children? Are they okay? Will I make it to pick them up in good time? Am I in the right space to even have conversations with them? Am I taking the pressures of work back to the children? So it, the, it calls for a lot of prepping also to detach and also to transition. Mm -hmm. Now for the stay-at-home mom, like I mentioned, again, transitioning into what? It needs to be very clear. And this may sound like cliche, but for me, my experience was I needed to do this with God. Mm -hmm. It was no longer, let's try it. Let's, it needed to be a place where for sure I will make impact and it will be transformational. It had to be purpose more than anything else because I had a choice to continue staying at home. Mm -hmm. 
and and maybe I was uh, privileged to just have whatever it is that I needed at that time and I could work with so really I maybe it was just the feeling of okay I need to go back I need to go back but for me it was purpose it was purpose and I believe that God takes us where he wants us to because there's there's what all of us are shaped to be mm -hmm. so what is that that you're shaped to be so beyond being a stay-at-home mom, as you transition, don't just ac accept anything that comes your way because you know what, you, you, you really didn't have it. Mm -hmm. You really didn't have it. So go for purpose as opposed to, I just want to. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, early on, you talked about your mom being a single parent. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we talk about children, they are very, a mother's, I mean, a very emotional um, subject. Uh, now, this staying at home season, is it something that single parents can, in a way, experience also for the sake of their children, or it's not a luxury they can have? I think they can with a strong support system. For example, if you're single and still staying with your parents, and your parents uh, your, your parents are ready to take care of your child, then it's something that can be explored because you have that strong support system, then they're able to provide for you and provide for your child. And I know for also for preteens who have children before they're married, that sort of environment is there. So it's possible to still bring up your child um, being a stay-at-home mom, and I have seen those, mm -hmm. but with a very strong support system. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's possible with support. Yes. Then there is the corporate woman mm -hmm. doing extremely well, but there is a tag in their heart that they need to spend time with their children. And they are in their hearts, in their minds, you know, like toying with this idea, should I, is it time for me to take a break from my career? and invest in my children as a purposeful decision. But in that place, they don't know how to make this decision. Uh, it's career on one hand, there are children on the other. Uh, can you help such um, a, a person who is going through that moment in their minds right now? Potential stay-at-home moms. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. So I believe 99% of the moms in the corporate world have either thought about it, talked about it, explored how that would be just staying at home and some of the maybe the the dis, where the, they find themselves at the crossroad is thinking about finances will we handle this with one income is it possible and that's and so if it's not possible then i'm out of it but if for sure you're able to just scale down your budget and live within your means, then it's possible. And it can be, let's have clear timelines of how long. Because I believe that the formative years of the children are very important for the mom to just instill those values. So to the corporate mom who thinks about it, dreams about it, Talk about it with your spouse, if possible. Talk about it with your family members. See whether you can have that support system to actually just take time out from your corporate job and just spend time with your children mm -hmm. and then go back at some point when they really don't need you all the time. All right. So it yeah. can be planned for. Absolutely. Now, let's it talk about be. the corporate organization itself. Mm -hmm. And um, the corporate sometimes demands so much from its workers. Uh, that they need to be present no matter what. You know, as long as the corporate needs you, you need to be there. But in the area of policy or practices, uh, when the children are in the, when there is a mother and a father who have children in those formative stages, you know, what would you, in terms of practice, in terms of uh, human resource practice, would you talk about organizations being sensitive in those situations to a certain level, such that if you have a child, for instance, who is below five years, that there's a certain flexi plan that can be done in the spirit of um, the cooperation, uh, honoring the human resource of the future? 
I know there are some institutions already who mm -hmm. are embracing some of these policies. For example, they're also having crash where the mom can go with the nanny and the baby to the crash and you're allowed to go to take breaks to go and breastfeed the baby. I applaud those institutions. Can we do much more? Absolutely. For example, as opposed to having a three month break once you have your child, why not give the mom an option of taking a cut from her pay and they can take a whole year. For the dads, as opposed to having the, uh, what is it called? Wow, it's a short, it's a, it's a I short, don't even know what, it's, it's like two off. weeks. It's a, it's a weekend. <laughs> So we can because you have a baby. Yes. You know, we can off. Yes. But anyway. Is mm -hmm. it possible to, to give also the dads an option? You can take a cut, you can take um, off pay for a whole year and stay with your baby. And yet your job remains secure. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to develop such policies within these institutions? I dream about that. Yeah, and I and I feel that <laughs> I dream that's about that. How, um, a, a culture that is friendly to families yes. and sensitive to children should exhibit those kinds of practices. Absolutely. And may your dream come to pass. Amen. You know, <laughs> we're talking about corporates out yes. there. Let's, let's come to the church, you know, and um, stay at home moms and dads. And that word is not, or that category of members is in the church and the community is not often yeah. addressed. Yeah. I mean, can you speak to the church also? in terms of some things they can do to uh, be part of this support? I think because of the stigma, I'm sure the church leadership sees the need, hears the need, but they don't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. Because if you put together such a program, um, it's, it's almost like the feeling is uh, the stay-at-home mom is so needy, they actually need this help. I mean which is important for example like our church where i fellowship mm -hmm. Regis baptist we have developed the program for stay-at-home moms and we'll be launching it on the 4th of august mm -hmm. Regis baptist Regis baptist which church. date again 4th of august 4th of august okay. yes mm -hmm. so we are launching the arise uh, stay-at-home mom program specifically for them so churches should start speaking more of this should start having support programs for the stay-at-home mom because the stay-at-home mom does such valuable job mm -hmm. that it cannot be swept under the carpet okay yes we have the women's groups and we have the men's groups and we have even the single the single girls groups mm -hmm. but i haven't had that in churches okay yeah so mm -hmm. i challenge the churches mm -hmm. to embrace this more all right and yeah. there are uh, right now churches and church leaders pastors who, after listening to this, uh, would want to partner with you and they would want you to support them in addressing this, um, uh, this need uh, in their congregations and in the community. Um, maybe you can tell them how they can get in touch with you. Yes, so uh, we have an email address. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just write to arisam at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah arisam at gmail.com we will get the email let us know what your needs are and we are happy to do that but over and above that you can visit our website and you can get the book and it's a free online mm -hmm. book and i know generous. smith people <laughs> have asked generous. and why is it that this is a free book because i wanted to reach as many moms as possible mm -hmm. so it's a free online book that you can just download so and what's your website again www at arisehm.com. All right, yes. great. And uh, I know that you've talked about a program that you are doing for the local church, uh, uh, Regis Baptist. Uh, but if somebody, a stay-at-home mom, uh, wants to connect with their Arise platform, or there is a dad who wants to connect their spouse to uh, the Arise, um, uh, Arise platform, or even a dad who may want to start uh, a branching out for dads who are staying at home, yeah. just how can they get in touch with you? So um, I can leave my contact with you mm -hmm. and then they will be able to reach out. Okay. Yes. Or they can they use the same email address? Yes, they can about? also use the same email address. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yes. Uh, it's a big dream. It is. And um, it's absolutely. And scaring. Yeah. And absolutely very scary. worth it because yes. it goes right into the heart of our society 
and how we value families and also how we value our children, the next generation. Barack Obama once said that uh, the, future, the present, we borrow it from our children. And so when you talk about the supporting the children by, by the way of mother staying at home, is really also an honor you know, to what God has given us in the present and also in the future. Yes. May your dream come true. Amen. In your time. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Viewer, we've been talking to Anne Maora, and she's been talking to us about the need for us to positively embrace the stay-at-home moms. Be that ambassador. From this point on, see stay-at-home moms positively. Talk, to, talk about them positively, because by doing so, we are honoring our children, we are honoring our families, and most importantly, we are honoring God. This has been Spotlight. Thank you for watching.